As a pastor, I've had the sacred privilege of being present at some of the biggest life changes that happen in people's lives. I'm there for births and deaths, for marriages and divorces, for job losses and moves and empty nester times and retirement, you name it. I often find myself in those situations talking to people about the new normal, the, the way of life that a person or a family had come to rely on is suddenly and dramatically changed. It's not like it used to be. Everything's different. It is, in fact, a new normal. How do we deal with that? What do we do with a new normal? Well, I've been hearing that phrase, new normal, in reference to the pandemic a lot lately. Some people, many people, in fact, long to get back to normal, right? We long for the freedom of movement uh, without distancing and without masks and without fear. But others, others see this as a time of opportunity, of possibility. They, uh, they think that it's time for us to um, take this opportunity and create something new. They're quick to remind us, of course, that the good old days weren't really all that good. Politics and racism, uh, poverty and oppression. They're challenging us to be a part of the creation of a new normal, of something better, right? You know, the first Easter morning issued the same invitation. An invitation to the people of God to be a part of creating a new normal, a better normal. When where life on earth is as it is in heaven. You know, my heart longs for that. Doesn't yours? <laughs> That must have been some morning that first Easter. In fact, it must have been some week, that last week of Jesus' life, too. You know, Jesus arrives in Jerusalem to the shouts of, Hosanna, save us. And then the dial is, is turned up, way up, on Jesus, the urgency of, of Jesus' teaching and his message. But also on the challenge to him and that message was dialed up too. All the while, those in positions of authority are, are plotting ways to get rid of him, to destroy him. And they succeed, or at least they think they do. I mean, Jesus is, after all, dead in a stone-cold tomb. His followers have, have scattered. His disciples are in hiding, broken-hearted and disillusioned. This was not the way it was supposed to go. But for those who have been paying attention, for those who, as Jesus likes to say, have eyes to see and ears to hear, a new normal is already breaking through into reality. Let's recall the story, shall we, as it's recorded in John's Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, 
and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Wow. Can you imagine? You know, to all the world, this Jesus guy and his, his radical ideas, well, they'd been dealt with back on Friday. He was dead and buried. And his radical ideas, well, they were buried right there with him. Even his closest followers were focused on death and on the tomb. Death had reared its ugly head and it had buried their hopes. <laughs> but here's the deal, friends. God wasn't finished. In fact, what looked like an ending was really a new beginning. You know, the disciples like we so easily forget how, how consistent God is in the way he works. You know, like the seed that has to die and fall to the ground and be buried before it can sprout and grow and bloom into new life again. Death and burial have to come first before something new can begin. That's how God works. And friends, something new has begun, right? Peter and John saw the grave clothes and remembered in that moment the words of the prophets and the, the teachings of Jesus. They finally understood that in God's hands dry bones can come back to life, that the breath of God brings new creation, that the dead will live and their bodies will rise. Friends, this is the God we worship, the God we follow and celebrate, especially on this day. Now, of course, this, this new life, this new normal, well, it doesn't look like the old, right? And how could it, after all? God intends, God intends something so much better for us, so much better than the old normal. You know, Mary doesn't recognize the resurrected Jesus who's standing right there before her. Not until, that is, she hears his name. And again, Jesus' words come to life, right? The good shepherd who knows his sheep and whose sheep recognize his voice. Well, they always find one another, don't they? And so those... Those who have been paying attention to the events of Jesus' life and ministry and to the events of the past week know that something incredible has happened. On that morning, a new day has dawned. The old world has passed away and a new world came into being. Heaven and earth came together in the resurrection of this, this fully human and fully divine Jesus. And nothing, nothing could ever be the same again. You know, friends, God's new creation has begun. Easter is the herald telling us that the kingdom of God has broken through on earth as it is in heaven. 
And we get to be a part of it, don't we? We to, to be plunged into it in baptism and to eat and drink it in the Eucharist, to, to celebrate it in worship and to explore it in a life of prayer. And, and maybe most, of, most importantly, to make it happen in our world. You know, Jesus said to Mary, hey, don't stay here hugging me. Go and tell. Go and tell. Friends, Christian spirituality at its most authentic is about sustaining and equipping us so that we can accomplish the, the task of co-creating this kingdom of God and inviting others to be about that work as well. What a blessing, what a, what a privilege that is. The message of Easter is that a new creation has begun and you and I are called to be a part of it and to make it happen in the world. We do that by loving our neighbors by campaigning to make history, or to make history, by campaigning to make poverty history, by working for peace and justice, by engaging in anti-racism work, and by seeking a new start for, for refugees and asylum seekers, by engaging in a fresh vision if you will, for where we should be going in our, in our country and in our neighborhoods, in our schools and in our churches and in our homes. But here's the deal. A new normal, well, it can be kind of frightening, can't it? We don't much like change. But I think if this pandemic has, has taught us anything, it's that we so very much need a new normal a better normal. Our new normal, one that is hour by hour and day by day coming into being should look different, shouldn't it? Just as Jesus looked different to Mary. This is the call, friends. Take the scripture in one hand and the power of God in the other. Take a deep breath of the air of new creation, which is blowing through the world at Easter, and find what it is that you can do to make this new creation a reality, a new, the new normal that will break the chains of oppression and set us all free. You know, my prayer is that, that it will look like a deeper love of life, born out of the pain of so much loss, that it will look like a greater compassion born out of the cry of our brothers and sisters of color, that it will look like grace and mercy for, for the oppressed poor and for the better life-seeking neighbors, that it will look like healing and unity, and most of all, that it will look like love. Friends, we are the Easter people. So let's go and tell, and let's go and make our, a new normal, a better reality. Today on this Easter morning, the heavens are rejoicing, and it's our job to, to invite everyone to join in on the song. Christ the Lord, is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.